Alright, so the story for Brave the Video Game is somewhat loosely based on the movie, which here it actually pretty much starts right off. It's you as Marita, the Scottish princess, who does not want to be a princess. She wants to be an archer, of course. And in the beginning, she's chasing a bear who she keeps calling Mom. And you're going, why does she keep calling this bear Mom? Well, you find out later on that this bear is actually her mom transformed into a bear because she gave her this cursed piece of, like, a cake or something and it was supposed to make her change her mind about what she wants her daughter to be or something like that and somehow some way this cake turned her into a bear uh, and now she has to go and pretty much save her mother from this curse and of course rid the land of evil because when she accidentally gave her this uh, cake to eat she also unleashed some really evil bear thing that she has to go and kill so that's pretty much the story right there so really, I have to say the story here is very, very bland and does not do the movie any justice, really. There will be times here and there where uh, a cutscene will happen or Marita will start talking to herself, and I think these scenes are very amusing, but they don't happen enough, and that's why I think the story here is meh. So, yeah, it's meh. Let's go on to the sound. So now the sound, and I have to admit the voice acting here is actually really good, and the main reason why I would say this is because of Kelly McDonald, who actually voices the main character Marita from the movie, and she actually voices the main character here as well, and she does a damn good job here. I mean, first of all, she's a great voice actress. She sounds really likable. She has a great Scottish accent. I mean, some people get annoyed by that. Me, I think it's a great Scottish accent. And really, she leads the game because there's really not many other voice actors. I mean, there's some here and there, very small snippets, but for the most part, it's her and she does a great job with what she has. And the rest of the sound is actually really good as well. Even though I would say the sound design is a little bit too repetitive at times, it still isn't annoying, especially when you have the soundtrack which is actually really damn good and I have a feeling it's the exact same soundtrack as the movie which is fine because I mean, it's a really good soundtrack so uh, it fits well with the game it comes in the, at the right moment it makes things seem more epic than they actually are and I really like the soundtrack so overall the sound here is actually really good as well so let's go on to the graphics now the graphics there are plenty of environments to look at in Brave, so you're never looking at the exact same thing over and over again. It's never really repetitive environmentally wise. And also the camera is isometric, so you're never really close to environments, so you can't really tell if they're really bad looking texture wise or even model wise. But even with these two positives, I have to say the graphics here are definitely not pleasing to look at. I mean, first of all, I don't know what it is. It's just the main character's hair looks strange. It looks like if you just got a bunch of crinkled paper and then mixed it with Cheeto dust and it just doesn't it just it looks strange and also the character models just don't look right as well especially when you see the same enemies over and over again because they repeat them a lot and even though the isometric camera is isometric most of the time sometimes during cutscenes and some puzzles and platforming segments the camera will get a little closer and you can tell how muddy the textures are for some of the environments and how blocky some of the models are so overall the the graphics aren't terrible but they're just not pleasing to look at it's not amazing it's not a crisis game of course but it's not a horrible looking game so that's the best thing I could say here it's a mad looking game just like the story it's meh so overall there you go graphics let's go on to the gameplay so the gameplay is comprised of two segments. You have a hack and slash gameplay with your sword, which you played before. You just go around hacking and slashing enemies, whatever. And also, strangely enough, you have a bow and arrow, which serves as a twin stick shooter, which you use the right stick to aim your bow at any direction, and you use the left stick, of course, to move, and you move around aiming the right stick at any enemy that's around, and you pretty much shoot the arrow and that's really really strange and it actually really works here it's also really cool when you actually get more elemental powers for your arrows and each of these elemental powers will actually affect certain enemies like if you get a fire elemental you can actually hurt ice enemies and if you get an ice elemental you can hurt fire enemies so it actually makes gameplay a little bit more strategic which is something I really like it's not just a shoot 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 screw all the stuff you actually have to pay attention and see which enemies are weakened by other elementals which I actually really enjoyed and while you're going through all eight of these levels that the game provides you you can acquire these coins from dead enemies and jars and use them to unlock different abilities for your bow and arrow and your sword and just different abilities that you can use like a dodge roll or a slam attack 
And also while you're looking through the environments, you actually will find different items. Like you'll find different swords and bow and arrows and items that will raise your health up a little bit and your attack strength. So overall, I think the combat here is a lot of fun. It's a really cool hybrid of two completely different genres. And even though it might get repetitive a little bit here and there, I thought it was a lot of fun. Now besides the combat, the developers decided to add a little bit more variety to the game and they added platforming and puzzle solving to the game. Now I'm just going to say the platforming here really does not work, especially when you have the isometric camera. It just makes the platforms way too small and the character small too, so you'll be like missing the platforms all the time and losing health every time you do it. And the puzzle solving aspects are really easy and just feel like they're filler just to make the game a little bit longer, which I really don't like in a game. So now overall I would say this, Brave is the best movie game I played this year and that is saying a lot. Actually no it's not because most of the other ones sucked. But not this game because this one actually works. It's a lot of fun and I would say it's a good movie game. Highly recommended for a rental and if you can find it for 20 or 30 bucks in the next couple of weeks then purchase it because it's a fun little game. Also it has split screen co-op which I couldn't play because I have no friends. Sadly. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, there you go. There's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye. Also, remember to follow me on Twitter and like my Gore the Movie God Facebook fan page. Links in the description. Thank you for watching this video and goodbye.